What's up, people? 20.5 coming at you. Three, two, one, go. So, yeah, yeah the workout was 40 ring muscle ups, 80 war ball shots. Uh, no, sorry. 120 war ball shots and 80 calorie room. I got there in the end. I actually knew this workout for a change. So, let me finish this workout. Tell you my um, rep schemes and kind of strategy. It was eight ring muscle ups, 15 war balls, 10 calorie row. That was just one round of that. Then I did three rounds of five ring muscle ups, 15 war balls, and 10 calorie row. And then, so after I did three rounds of that, it was then four rounds of four ring muscle ups, 15 war balls, and 10 calorie row. Obviously, with the calorie row, some, sometimes I ticked over. Uh, and did 11 calories sometimes I ticked over and did 12 calories sometimes I did six calories sometimes I, and the last one I did, second last one I did five calories so kind of I enjoyed this workout I'm not gonna lie um, everything in, in or most of the open workouts won't be long jump on the bike for five minutes jump on the road because it's obviously rowing in this workout and with this just don't gas yourself out and obviously with it being a gymnastic gymnastic kind of based workout because imagine if you drop from a gymnastics ring, ring or bar, the reps are lost from not doing anything, and it's harder to jump up back onto doing gymnastics compared to wrestling on the row. So for me, it was get a big set, big set of ring muscle ups out at the start because obviously I'm going to be fatigued later on. And with me, I don't have great um, pushing endurance, so anything with um, ring muscle ups, bar muscle ups, it's all right on the kit, but the lockout is not very good for me. Same with handstand pushups. I'm not the best handstand push ups because my shoulders are pretty weak and really bad in drugs. First is second round. So, with me, with workouts like this, I'd rather have my own game plan kind of set up. Because imagine if I was doing a set of seven one time, set of four one time, set of two one time, it's just too much in my head. I'd rather just be like, yep, yeah, I've got three rounds of this, and then once I've done four rounds of that, I've finished. Once I do three rounds of five ring muscle ups, I'm finished. Rather than scattering my reps around everywhere. Um, so I wanted to just keep it an even playing field and focus on the ring muscles because they're the kind of the selling point of this workout. People are going to get no reps on the, on the ring muscles and be like, oh crap. Well, imagine if you're breaking the ring muscles, you can't make that time up within seconds. Whereas if you do a no rep on the wall ball, for instance, I hit the bottom of the rim, it's a no rep. But I can, the, bars, the ball's going to come back down to me and I can do another rep. That's like, what, two seconds made up for that one no rep? Whereas the ring muscle up is going to be like 5 to 10 seconds for you to fully recover. Because most of the time if you do get a no rep on the ring muscle up, it's either shit luck out. <laughs> or you're just missing the, missing the drive out. So you don't want to go to muscular fatigue, which is the worst thing you can do on a ring muscle up. On the row, I just kind of use this as a resting point. I think I was holding... So the first probably 4 to 5, no, 3 to 4 rounds, I was holding at least like 12 to 1300, nothing too high. I know that kind of shot up to like 13, so I'd say like average 1300, sometimes 1200s, and then in the last three rounds I was holding like 11, 1200. Um, just to keep your heart rate low, because for me it was, the row was the easy part. Imagine if you're sitting on the row nice and casual, you're not losing any reps, you can't, you're accumulating reps whilst you're resting, compared to grinding through wall balls or ring muscle ups, your heart rate is going to spike up because you're kind of having to push that extra heart, that extra little burst of energy or whatever to get those reps out and another thing for me with the wall balls I did I got a few new reps because I hit the bottom of the the, t the target so the only thing for me that I could have done better in this workout was not get my four or five no reps on the wall balls they didn't get to my head too much it's just obviously if you're accumulating reps that you don't need to do you're gonna add to that fatigue already so it's a waste of reps basically um I mean, muscle ups are nice and smooth I think there was third to last one or second to last one I kind of caught it at the top and had to sit there for a bit because my um, kip up to the ring weren't very good so just keeping the rep range that you can you're consistent as and you're confident at um, holding and obviously you wouldn't you wouldn't know this until you've actually done it in training so if your training isn't the best you need to change it and realize that when it comes to competitions or workouts like this you've got to have at least been in this situation where you're doing ring muscle ups under fatigue from pulling on the bike or war balls under fatigue. A lot of people can do a big set of war balls fresh, but you're under fatigue, it's different, different ball game. Same with muscle ups, and even same with rower. If you're, you've only ever done intervals on the rower, 
that easy. Anyone can do those. You can do your paces and all that. Mix it in with some gymnastics. Mix it in with some um, multi multi um, hinging movements. So, like for instance, a snatch, a wall ball, or even a lunge. Robinson wall, different ball game because your heart rate spiked. Yeah, for, so for me, um, with transitions, I just try to keep them as quick as possible because if I should kept my transition from the rings to the wall ball and then to, from the wall ball to the row quick, I can kind of make up for the fast transitions by pulling on the row at one calorie. So I mean, imagine if it takes you three, if it, difference from me to probably someone else would be like three seconds from ring to wall ball and wall ball to rower compared to someone that's kind of taking it slow. Like I averaged, I think it was 26 or 27 or 25. So anywhere between 25 and 27 strokes a minute. Imagine if you're going slower or if you take like six seconds longer than I do on transitions, I've already made up two, two calories on two pulls. So you just got to take that into consideration. Every two, like obviously the starting pull is going to be like not even a calorie. My like first three pulls is a calorie. So imagine I've got two pulls ahead of you. Take that over my eight rounds. Two times eight is good math sixteen. So you've got to do sixteen extra pulls to get to where I am on the rower, minus the transitions. And I didn't chalk up until I think the fifth or sixth round. And that was just because I was kind of pushing the transitions and holding the rower. And then my transition time where it, was, where it was wasted or accumulated was chalking up because I kind of used that as my rest. Because even if I went slow on the row, I'd rather go fast. I'd rather go fast to get the, get the calories up than have longer to rest. Because it wasn't um, really blowy for me, it was more fatigue in my shoulders and triceps. And obviously lungs. As well. um, I didn't realize how wide my stance is. I kind of changed my stance for my. Um, wall balls I used to be a lot narrower and I used to have my, my toes pointing kind of forwards but this made it that um, when I was doing wall balls I was like doing it was like I was doing a front squat I was going too deep and it's unneeded range of motion for a wall ball you only need to hit parallel and get the ball to the wall, wall ball target and, and like for instance when I come off the, the wall balls I didn't I changed my grips from being on my hands to on my top of my hands and this kind of just let me hold the ball easier compared to having the, the grips touching the wall ball. I think here I was slowing down the row because obviously my heart rate was kind of spiked. And you can tell in my, when I'm doing workouts, you can tell in my face that I'm fucked. <laughs> and like, it, was just, it wasn't that my lungs were gone, it was just muscular endurance in my shoulders, triceps, and like kind of chest from the, the kip out from the wing muscles. Because I, I wanted to focus on really, so this is the kind of the rest break I'd have. So I jumped, I can start chopping at 33. That's like 8 seconds, 7, 8 seconds. Obviously, the chances could be better, but I'd rather imagine if you're kind of resting, just stood looking at the rings. I'd rather use the chalk up as a rest and kind of get quick off the row, get to the chalk, so I'd not miss a rep on the ring muscle ups. Because for me, once I hit kind of not failure, but if I fail a muscle up, it's usually that I'm going to have to rest at least 5 to 10 seconds. I'm not going to be able to jump back up. It's more of an engine kind of thing and movement skill workout. And also, this is me. This is my last open workout because I won't be going anymore. I won't be able to redo it on Saturday or Sunday due to work. And I'm away on Monday. Yeah, big 21. Turning 21, going tomorrow with the boys. So this is the last open workout for me. I'm going to also put out, I think it's 17.3 uh, like a few weeks before the open. I'll stick that out. I don't know if I'm going to commentary over that. But I'll get comments over that yeah very nice study because I've seen I think I watched I watched Patrick Brown's um, 20.5 and he did a big sets of gymnastics and bigger sets on the wall balls then and also a lot of people have I think I've heard a lot of people have finished on the wall balls imagine if you're sprinting on the wall balls compared to sprinting on a rower I'd be realistic you can't really sprint on the wall ball because you can only throw the ball as fast as you can whereas you can get the calories ticking over faster on a row and same with ring muscle ups. That's just my opinion. Obviously everyone's different, everyone has the pros and the cons. My pro is rowing and um, just thinking more of a skill base in the workout. And my cons are my pushing endurance. So shoulder, chest and tricep endurance isn't the best. So I make up for that on the rower. And obviously splitting up the sets where I'm using the row as a recovery. I think it was about here that I kinda didn't, I, yeah, probably kinda did redline. 
but I was like, I think the sixth round or seventh round, I was like, forget this, I'm just gonna dig in. I'm, this is my final attempt. This is another, the only open workout I'm gonna do once. So I'm just gonna hold, hold on to doing 15 reps each round and just stick to it because I'd rather, because like, that's, that's the difference between you versus the guy that's got got um, a 10 second faster score than you, 20 second faster score, 30 second faster score. It's because they want they they are mentally able to stick to that pace the whole way through and not drop off. Even everyone, it's hard for everyone. End of the day, you've just got to hold on to that kind of rep scheme or your kind of target for the workout. So I was like thinking in my head, I was like, shit, I need to do 10 on this round. But then I realized that that's gonna take 10 seconds off my total time because it's wasted in transition time as well as that. Last time I choke up, so I, I felt like I would have almost fallen on these ring muscles if I needed to have time to rest and get a breath. Through. So I'll leave you guys to the last round of me sprinting on the roller. I enjoyed this workout. Good luck to everyone that's doing 20.5 and well done everyone on the open. I enjoyed it, my first open ever. Um, can I get better? See ya! Level 48, so like.